Check this shit out. I've never done a video about games that I've picked up recently. Not that I haven't wanted to, I do. I love talking about these things as objects, just analyzing the little nuances of their designs, especially when it comes to retro games. The problem is that I just haven't been collecting that much recently. I reached the relative end of my Nintendo Entertainment System collection years ago, and after that, titles for the other systems did come, but at a much slower trickle than the flood of NES games. My wife and I had a baby recently, so pretty much all my time is spent with them, or renovating a house, playing or watching soccer, and making these videos. Occasionally, occasionally, I actually play games for fun. But let me tell you, over Christmas break, I sat down and ran through Ghost of Tsushima on the PS4. And while I loved every second of it, I really had to force myself to just enjoy the game and not sneak off to do some projects. Just how things are at this particular time in my life. All that to say, yeah, I don't really see a lot of new games these days. But I have picked up kind of a random mix of things in the last few months that I thought I would share with y'all and kind of give you some of the weird or interesting backstory on each of them. First up is Barcode World, and this is for the Japanese NES, the Famicom. This actually came all the way from Japan to the US in one week. One week. The future is wild, y'all. Recently, I posted a review of Euphoria, which is an amazing game, and a subscriber called Bananonymous Last Name mentioned that Euphoria was part of a series of Japan-only games, and that the main characters appeared in a bizarre little title called Barcode World. Basically, you would connect this to a barcode battler, and then use that to scan a bunch of commercial items. Like everything from Windex to butt cream could work and has some effect on the game, whether it's new characters or items or like point upgrades. I don't really know. Lots of possibilities. Weird, right? Let's open it up and see what's going on. Comes with a few cards, and I don't know what this is, and a manual, all of which are in Japanese. This is the actual cartridge here. This wire connects the Famicom to the barcode battler, which I did not purchase. Also not purchased, the Famicom needed to play it. Last up, the game comes packaged with some specific cards that can be swiped and then used in the game somehow. You can see the barcodes here on the back. There's some neat little drawings including characters from Euphoria, Mr. Gimmick, whatever this game is, and also some cool objects like this hoverboard, this gun, and somebody's used tube of lotion. I don't have any way to play this yet, but if I ever do, I'll start scanning everything in sight and I'll upload another video. Anyway, I just thought this was too interesting of a side note in the NES's library to not pick up and just dissect, even if I can't play it. Plus, it's complete in box, which is super rad. Speaking of the Famicom, here's another title for the system called Doughboy. My wife and I were recently in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, home of Dollywood, and there we went to a store called Control Freak, which had a bunch of good NES and Famicom stuff. Again, I have no way to play this, but it just looked way too funny not to buy. Like, I don't know what Doughboy means, but I just love the design of this goofy dude. Looking like, shit, what did I do to end up in this mess? That just about sums up every American conflict after World War II. At the same store, I also purchased Impossible Mission 2. Not to be confused with Mission Impossible, which also saw a release on the Nintendo, Impossible Mission 2 was an unlicensed NES game from American Video Entertainment. It's got that classic press here circle at the top, in case anyone was confused on how to pull a game out of their NES. If I didn't know any better, I'd guess from this cover that this might actually be an okay game, but probably not. I don't really collect unlicensed titles, as they rarely work on either version of the Nintendo. And then the ones that do are kind of dog shit. Honestly, I'm never gonna play this. It just briefly fed my collecting compulsion. I banished thee to shelf obscurity. If you've been following my channel, then you probably know that right now I'm really into the PAL library, which are the NES games that never made it to the States and were only released in Europe and Australia. They don't work on a regular American Nintendo, but if you've got the Model 2 top loader, they work most of the time. This here is the impossible to search for Mario Bros. Classic series. I say impossible because it's already pretty rare, and typing in Mario Bros. Classic into Google or eBay will give you thousands of results, all for games you're not looking for. 
What makes this so special? Well, it's basically the Mario Bros. arcade game, but a slightly different version with better graphics, sound, cutscenes, and more. Supposedly. I haven't played it yet, but I will do a video soon comparing it with its NTSC counterpart. I will say this is a way better cover than the other version I have, with this great drawing of the brothers Mario, and this rad little gold emblem with Mario rocking a top hat. This one is apparently German as indicated by the language on the back and the DAS symbol here in the corner. Next up is Over Horizon. I've heard of this one because it comes up often in hidden gems or best NES games lists, even though it never made it to America. I haven't popped this one in yet, but I do know it's a fairly well regarded shooter in the vein of something like Life Force. A lot of mediocre shooters have kind of similar cover art to this, so at first glance I don't think I'd assume much about the game itself, but this monster head is pretty terrifying, and that font, it's pretty hot. I ordered this and the other PAL games off eBay, and an interesting trend I found is that they often come with manuals. Neat! This never happens with American games, but I've got quite a few boxes and manuals from overseas that I didn't order. It's all in German, which isn't too helpful for me, but the illustrations are pretty cool. Finally, there's Trolls in Crazy Land. Yep. This is actually one of the rarer PAL titles, and it's a reskin of a Famicom game called Doki Doki Yuenshi Crazy Land Daisakusen, meaning they just pasted troll characters onto another game and called it a day. I've actually played this one before, and it's right in the middle between fun and frustrating. So yeah, at some point I'll probably be covering it. No idea why this never reached America, as the trolls were huge over here in the early 90s, but who knows? I call it Trolls in Booty Land because, damn, dat ass. This is an Italian cartridge, as evidenced by this message on the front. And that's it. I've got more PAL exclusives on the way, so at some point if I acquire maybe a few more titles, I'll do another one of these. But until then, stay tuned for more reviews and whatnot. Thanks for watching.